Mike Sports Vibes. Thank you for vibing with me. This is the game preview between the undefeated Mighty Minnesota Vikings versus the New York Jets. Now, let me say this. We are in London. Let's go. Skull. Skull. Skull to the boat. And if you're a Minnesota Viking fan, make sure you leave in the comments. Skull. If you're a real Minnesota Viking fan, leave in the comments. Skull. And hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We're going live for absolutely every Minnesota Viking game. So join the YouTube family. It's going to be a live party. You know, it's going to be a celebration because we will be undefeated. After week five, and it's going to be a beatdown. I'm going to give you my final score prediction right now. 43 to 23. And let me say that one more time because I don't, I want the people in the back to understand what I just said. It's going to be a beatdown. 43 to 23. I don't think it's, it might not even be that close. But we're in London. So the time and all that might, vet, like, you know, they might play a little sloppy in the, like, in the beginning of the game. I, we'll, we'll see what happens. But this is the keys to victory. For the mighty Minnesota Vikings in week five. We're going to be 5-0. Let me keep saying that. We're going to be 5-0. <laughs> but look, we have to play turnover-free football and slow down one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. And I know a lot of people are saying, boo. They're like, what are you saying, Mike? You're a Viking fan. You're saying that Aaron Rodgers is one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time? Yeah, I'm going to give him credit. Credit when credit is due. I'm surprised he didn't win more Super Bowls in his career because he's that bull. He really is. With the Packers, he was doing his thing. And with the Jets, he got hurt last season. This season, he's, I guess, fairly healthy. But, man, what a great player overall. But, man, we have to make him one-dimensional somehow, some way, and take away his short passes and take away his run game. And let's be more specific. The run game, his running backs, is Breland Outland. He's a rookie. Coming out of uh, Wisconsin, I believe the team name is the Badgers. And for all three seasons in college with the Badgers, he um, almost all three, se three seasons, he rushed for 1,000 rushing yards. But this is the NFL. There's levels to the game, but I will say he's very shifty. He's very elusive. He's very, I, I like him. I actually really like him. They also have a running back named Brees Hall. When healthy, this man is a pr pretty solid. I don't want to give him too much credit. He's a solid running back. Last season, 2023, he rushed for almost 1,000 yards. But the one thing that makes him special is his receiving. He had 591 receiving yards last season. So he can do, they both can catch out of the backfield. So we have to make sure we stop their running back screens. We know Aaron Rodgers, as Minnesota Vikings fans, we know he likes that running back screen. So not only do we have to stop the run, and another thing is Aaron Rodgers can scramble a little bit as well. So we got to stop him as well for scrambling for first downs. But we got to stop the run and contain the running backs when it comes to receiving as well. So that's the number one thing, right, for me when it comes to, like, stopping Aaron Rodgers. All right. Now let's get to the wide receivers. Let's start with the tight end. Tyler Conklin. We all know about Tyler Conklin. And I'm going to boo him right now because he's on the opposing team. You know he started with the Minnesota Vikings. So he's a solid tight end. I'm not going to say too much more about him. I'm not going to hate on him all like that. But I had to give him the thumbs down because he's on the opposing team. I had to. You know what I mean? Also, they have a wide receiver. His name is Garrett Wilson. I feel like that's their best wide receiver on their team. He had 1,103 receiving yards in 2022. And in 2023, last season, he had 1,042 receiving yards. He is a solid slash good young wide receiver. They also have a wide receiver named Mike Williams and Alan Lazard. I ain't worrying about none of them. I feel like our corners are going to shut them down. Byron Murphy, let's go. Gilmore, let's go. Let's talk about some of our safeties. Let's go Shaq as well. That's another corner. And Harrison Smith and my bull Cam. Let's go. Josh Metellus. I feel like we going to shut their wide receivers down and we're going to shut their running backs down and we're going to apply that pressure with that Bull with, with them bulls. I ain't going to say with 
that boy, there's multiple of them. When it comes to Patrick Jones, when it comes to Dallas Turner, when it comes to Jerry Tillery, I feel like he's doing a lot stopping the run as well. Harrison Phillips and the guys, Jonathan Grenard. But I, let me get back to Patrick Jones, the second. Let me say this. I feel like he's going to have a crazy game against the Jets. I just got a feeling. Yo, I got to watch. At the, at the end of the game, I'm going to see what his stats are. But I have a feeling he about to go off. But look, let's keep it real. I know Aaron Rodgers has seen most defenses around the NFL. He's been in the NFL for a long time. He's seen a lot of different schemes. You know what I mean? But Brian Flores is different. And he hasn't seen Brian Flores' defense with the mighty Minnesota Vikings. I don't think so. Because every, every quarterback is confused when they go against our defense. And in my opinion, I feel like it's still the number one defense. I understand they gave up a, a lot of yards against the dang on Green Bay Packers. It's because our offense didn't capitalize in the second half. Our offense didn't score until the fourth quarter. They kept going three and out or turn the ball over. That's what it was in the second half for the Minnesota Vikings against the Green Bay Packers. And our defense just got tired. Just point blank period. Byron Murphy had an interception in the second half. I, I believe it was a Shaq that had an interception in the second half. Also, um, Byron Murphy uh, made the bull fumble, craft fumble, and we didn't capitalize on none of it in the second half. So it wasn't the defense. It was more of the offense that didn't do the best in that second half. But I feel like they're going to do a lot better. Let me just say that. But, yeah, I feel like our defense is going to shut it down. Now, let's talk about the Minnesota Vikings offense. Now, Sammy D, and I said this earlier in the video, we have to take care of the ball. Sammy D has to try to just take care of the ball a little bit better. He's having an outstanding season. I'm not hating. I'm just stating. If he would take care of the football a little bit better, man, we would be blown out. There would be no close games. At all. <laughs> That's just a fact, baby. Because, ah! you know, I'm about to go Super Saiyan because, you know, Vegeta picked the Vikings. And I'm about to get a Viking helmet for this bull, uh, Goku. But Vegeta is representing, y'all. He's representing, y'all. So, since Vegeta is representing and he gave me the Super Saiyan power, you know, I feel like the Minnesota Vikings are about to go off in week five. But Sam Darnold, all jokes aside... If he takes care of the football, this is an easy dub. Easy win. Easy work. You know what I'm saying? And look, I understand they have Sauce Gardner. In my personal opinion, this is just my opinion, y'all. I feel like he's the best corner in all of football. And they also have a solid corner in DJ Reed. They have a solid safety in Chuck Clark. And he's from Philadelphia, so shout out to him. But hopefully he doesn't do good against the mighty Minnesota Vikings. And they also have another solid safety interception machine, Tony Adams. So, yo, Sammy D, you got to take care of the football. But the thing about it, they have all that in the secondary. But the thing about it is they haven't went against the best wide receiver. Let's go, baby. I'm getting hyped, y'all. I'm getting so hyped, y'all. They haven't went against number 18. The best of the best. You know what I'm saying? Justin Jefferson. They haven't went against the best Robin to the Batman of JJ, Jordan Addison. They haven't went against Speedy, 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 Nailer. They haven't went against him. Brandon Powell. The only thing I want to say about Speedy Nailer, just make it up. I understand that the sun must have got in your eyes against the Green Bay Packers. I just don't want you returning punts. I hope Kevin O'Connell doesn't let that happen again. I hope the special teams coach does not let that happen again. Let Brendan Powell and let Miles Gaskin return punts. That's all I got to say. Please, man. Please. You know what I mean? Because that stopped the momentum. We was up 28 to zero. That's the past. Don't even talk about that. But I had to talk my talk. talk that. Talk. I had to talk my talk, man. But yeah, man, it's going to be vicious. It's going to be a vicious beatdown. And look, the offensive line has to continue to keep Sam Darnold upright and pretty in that pocket. Sometimes I looked at that pocket. It was so clean. I said, yo, this is crazy. This bull got all this time. It looked like prime days of the Patriots when... Tom Brady had, like, the best offensive line for, like, four years in a row. It looked like that. You know what I'm saying? I said, is this the Minnesota Vikings offensive line? Christian Darrisaw? Is this, is this Brian O'Neill? Well, them two are good. You know, 
what about uh Blake Brando and Ed Ingram and Bradbury? Like, come on, like really? They was doing their thing. They doing their thing all season, and I am pleasantly surprised and happy about it. You know, but look, man, we have to make sure they do their thing because we have to establish the run. Aaron Jones had a great revenge game against the Green Bay Packers last week. Did the dang on thing. You know what I'm saying? And Ty Chandler. Let's go. We have to run the ball well. But it starts with the trenches with the offensive line. You know what I'm saying? And the play action has to be on point. So if we have a running game and they bite on the play action, those good safeties and good corners, it's, it's going to be uh, it's gonna be easy money. You feel me? That's how I look at it. Easy money. You feel me? So what else? What else? Now, when it comes to the D-line of the Jets, the Jets, their D-line, there's only two players that I will say we have to make sure we are on point. Not worry, because we ain't never scared. We ain't scared of nobody. But that bull, Will McDonald, number 99 defensive end, he already has five sacks and one forced fumble this season, third in sacks this season right now as I'm speaking and making this video. He's third in the league in sacks, right? And also... We have, and I believe Brian O'Neill and um, Christian Darrisaw, whatever side Will is going to be rushing, I feel like they're going to hold it down. So let me just say that. But another player, and this is their, their defensive tackle. So we got to hopefully Blake Brandle, Ed Ingram, and Bradbury. Y'all got to communicate because I'm going to tell you this right now. Those, these are the two players. It's uh, Will McDonald and Quinn, was it Quinnen Williams, number 95. They made their defensive line go. So if you could contain those two, we're Gucci. Easy dub. Easy dub, y'all. So that's all I got to say. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful day. Be confident, Minnesota Viking fans. We got this dub. And I'm simply excited for the rest of the season. Skull. I'm out. This is the end of the video. I truly appreciate you vibing with the bull. Make sure you hit that subscribe and like button. I'm out.